Hi everyone, this is Daniela coming to you from Perth, Western Australia for a nice chat again today all about knitting of course and everything else related to knitting. This is my special space on the, on the internet uh, called A Knitter's Suitcase because I've moved recently to Perth from the UK where I was living before and wherever I go, <laughs> wherever I move around and go visiting family in Europe and everywhere, I always take yarn with me and my projects and my favorite wool and woolly souvenirs. So one of my suitcases is always filled with yarn. This is just a quick presentation of who I am for the for the new visitors, new friends watching. My numbers have gone up <laughs> since last episode and I'm ever so grateful for those who keep coming back to, to meet me here and those who mm, are new, uh, welcome, welcome. And uh, yes, thanks so much for the comments, for all the support you're giving to my little channel. But let's crack on. The, the um, structure I normally use is the typical one. So I'll speak of what I'm wearing, my finished objects, uh, my works in progress. I am Dani UK on Ravelry and you find me on Instagram as a knitter suitcase and mo most recently now also on threads uh, as a knitter suitcase it's the same account i've got an email address for this podcast which is a knitter suitcase at gmail.com and i have got another bit of info to share with you which is the link to my project bag shop on etsy and uh, i have quite a few things to tell you about the shop and i'm and that's another, basically another of, of my creative endeavors that really is bringing me a lot of fun and joy and enjoyment and helping me connect with more and more knitters and makers around the world, which is fantastic. <laughs> so um, stay with me. Uh, I'll have timestamps below in the description box. So if the if any of the topics or the you know sections I'm going through is not of your interest, you can just skip to the next bit. And yes, mm, I suppose we can start. The only finished object I've got today. You can already see it because I'm wearing it. <laughs> and this is my second Lento. You know, if you go back to my some of my previous episodes now, I don't remember exactly the number, I'll write it down here. I have already knitted a Lento, which is a very popular pattern by Jona Hietala, uh, the founder of Line magazine. And um, it's been knitted all over the world <laughs> in many, many, many uh, ways and interpretations, particularly after um, Amy Palco of the Meaningful Stitch and Rebecca Klo of the Crea Bear launched a uh, knit along that was called Let's Lento. And I did knit mine within that, that event. Now the sun, <laughs> suddenly decided to come out. Sorry if there are a bit, you know, some <laughs> lighting issues, but it's a, a quite grey and over it was quite a grey and overcast day here in here in Perth, as you know we are down under for those who watch from from Europe or North America. And it's winter now, so we, we get some pretty grey days, but the sun just decided to show, show up and say, hello, I'm here too, I'm listening. <laughs> so um, I did knit my first lento in a rust color. And, uh, and then just by chance, <laughs> I decided to, to start another one. So, um, you know, sometimes I find, I don't know if it's the same for you, a piece or the inspiration for a piece is not necessarily born 
with the pro the the pattern with you seeing a pattern on on Ravelry or on the internet and deciding oh I really like that. Sometimes there are other things that bring you inspiration, aren't they? So for me, the inspiration was coming from the, the yarn in this case. And of course, I haven't got with me the yarn. <laughs> Just give me a second, please. So as I'm standing, because I had to go and get the, the yarn to show you, I think I thought I may give you a little look at the, at the garment itself. So here it is. My inspiration started with this yarn. This is what I've got left over. And this is a hand-dyed fingering weight yarn that I got here in Australia in a distache. It's hand-dyed by Fiber Lily, is the name of the, of the company. And it's her mm, super soft sock, which is 390 meters of super fine Australian super wash merino and nylon, 75, 25 per 100 grams in the colorway Cosmos Fleur. Um, I'm a lover of bright colors. <laughs> well, I'm a lover of all colors, but I do really like bright ones and pinks and, and this bright color. And uh, I decided to get it, but it was there in my yarn cupboard until I sort of started toying with the idea of swatching it with some black mohair. And that's the kind of fabric I got, and I immediately loved it. I loved it since, you know, the moment I could see the first three <laughs> rows of the of this watch I made. So I, I was determined to turn it into something really lovely, but I wasn't sure about the pattern because, you know, it's a very busy sort of yarn and, and color combination. And, and, and I had only two skeins. I, I already spoke about this a little bit in my previous episode. So anyway, I decided to go for for the lento because that's a garment that in my size works with two uh, can be completed with two skeins of uh, fingering weight yarn and the same meterage of uh, mohair lace weight mohair but <laughs> as you can see if you're familiar with the lento pattern I also introduced quite a few a few modifications to it because while I was starting to and knit it, um, I got inspired by another um, style of jumper that I've seen online. I think it was in the, um, oh, it's in the, um, in the latest book by uh, Line, uh, curated by um, Amy of the La Bien Aimé. Forget that. <laughs> The pronunciation here is terrible. Anyway, I was inspired by this jumper called Confluence by um, Caitlin Turovsky, I think, who's Wanderlust Knitwear. And it is actually a jumper uh, knitted with uh, two holds, two, holding two strands of yarn uh, like this one, though the examples I've seen online are, you know, on more subtle colors. And then the two um, yarns get sort of worked separately in the cuffs and the neck band that uh, have these sort of sporty like, you know, sort of um, they recall like baseball jumpers or sport jumpers stripes. So um, what I did then, I basically started knitting um, this jumper in, uh, I wanted to achieve a size two, which is the same I did for my previous Lento. Um, but I cast on the number of stitches for the neck because it's a top down jumper um, that is indicated for size three. I don't think there's a massive difference, but still I, I got for the other number of stitches 
with no ribbing at the neck, just a normal German twisted caston, that's my go-to normally, and started knitting. Uh, this, this jumper has, is a raglan construction, so you've got your increases at the, along the raglan lines that here are not very easy to see because of the busyness of the jumper. And then I basically mm, carried on, very relaxing, very mm, mindless <laughs> knitting um, along the body, leaving the, the, the stitches for the sleeves, uh, you know, on hold as you do. And um, with the first, only the first skein of fingering, I managed to knit the whole body and for a length of 40 centimeters, which was still quite short for me, but I thought, uh, let's see how I do with the sleeves and then whatever I've got left in terms of yarn, I'll carry on knitting along the body. So I, I did the sleeves and while the um, original pattern for the lento um, indicates that you should um, have tapered sleeves, so do, you know, um, progressive, you know, regular uh, decreases along the, the sleeve. I really like a, a roomier and, you know, drapier sleeve. So I just carried on straight with my knitting without any decreases. And then when I got to uh, the point where I was quite happy with the length, as I meant to knit a longer calf, all I did was decreasing with the um, ratio of one every four stitches, which is two knits and the third and then two together. So two knits, two together. But I did that with a <clears throat> smaller needle because the another of the features of this jumper, of the characteristics of this jumper is that you work on big needles, like six millimeter needles. And that's what gives it its, you know, airiness and, and drape the drape. But as I wanted the cuffs quite fitted, and I meant to go down quite a few needle sizes, I decided to do the decreases line uh, here at the, the, the final row of the sleeve where I was decreasing with a smaller needle. So from six, I went to 4.5. And then for the calf, I went down even farther to 5.2, to 3.5, sorry. The yarn I've used for the sleeves is just some leftovers. This pink one is a, I think it's a Merino, an Australian brand called Bellissima, Bellissimo, I think. I got it for a cowl that I knitted at Christmas as a present, but back then I wasn't very good at recording my projects. I didn't have a journal as I do now. And so I haven't got the bow band either anymore, but I think it's bellissimo in this uh, sort of bright pink. And then the, the stripes that I, um, did in teal, you can see it a bit better now because teal is another of the colors you find in the in this speckled fabric and is one is my favorite one. <laughs> this is a Filcolana Veta. Um, I should have the number here for you, a 202. So um, basically the cuffs are worked at a fingering weight um, you know, with a finger weight uh, yarn on 3.5 millimeter needles. So to achieve nice, neat stripes, I did the trick that I suppose you all my friends and viewers know, which is you only knit the first row and then you carry on with your ribbing in your following rows. So I did that with the first row of the teal, with the first row of the pink here, with the first row of the teal here, and with the first row of the pink for the rest of the cuff. And I finished it with a tubular bind off that I must say, it's fun. <laughs> I know this may be an, um, you know, an unpopular sort of opinion <laughs> because people find it 
cumbersome, particularly on wide circumferences, like, you know, your hem at the bottom, but I really enjoy it. I really like it. And I think it gives you a beautiful, beautiful finish. Another thing I did was um, decreasing just one, just two stitches here after the second, the second row, the second stripe. No, no thought about, you know, making jogless stripes, honestly, I couldn't be <laughs> bothered. And then I did this decrease because I really wanted the calf to be fitted. Going back, I could have, you know, sort of left it out because you, you do notice it's a bit, I did a central double decreasing mm, method, but yeah, I could have left it out, honestly. Anyway, didn't go back at all. I love it. Then, um, fit, having done both the sleeves, I mm, still had to work on the body and I'll stand up again. I decided just uh, to carry on and then um, do a one by one ribbing, normal one by one ribbing and a just knot. So believe it or not, I've made this jumper with less of two skeins of the fingering weight yarn in case you've got like your skein and three quarters <laughs> lingering around and you want to use them. And I'm left with this much which is 38 grams for the neck for the neck sorry i was forgetting that i just picked up the stitches around the neck uh, with a 3.5 millimeter needle a bit closer there it is and i don't dislike the fact that you know there is a bind off here where I've picked up because that gives, I think, the neck a little bit more of structure, particularly as this pink yarn is not sock yarn, it hasn't got any nylon, it's just merino, so that could sort of stretch quite a bit. So I, I like the idea of having reinforced it somehow by, you know, starting from a, the cast on line and then picking up stitches here. And again, same story about how I did the, the stripe and tubular bind off at the neck. So altogether, this jumper weighs 270 grams. It's so warm and light and <laughs> it's another one of those that I feel like I will never take it off. <laughs> I will never take it. I am going to show you my journal because if you're a regular here, you know that I, I like to record my project in my uh, very, very fun for me, uh, knitting journal. There we are. So this is uh, my Lento number two. Uh, the dates I cast on on the 1st of June and I bound off on the 8th of July. So it took forever, but believe me, oh, now it's really dark, isn't it? Uh, sorry, I can't control the weather. Um, so it took quite some time, but mm, it isn't really a, a jumper that requires weeks and weeks of knitting. It's just because I was doing a lot of other things in the meantime, I must say. And uh, yes, here are my ball bands, the fiber lily. Mm, sock yarn I've used and uh, the Lana Gatto I used is, the mohair I used is Lana Gatto in silk, very, silk mohair 6037 and I've got quite a few notes about the modifications I did because I, there, there was quite a bit of, you know, of my, my planning and my designing in it, though Again, it's all very simple, nothing particularly fancy. And yes, this is my note that I showed <laughs> you in my previous episode, episode as well. I think this fabric 
does look like jewels or gems in a coal mine because it it, it looks like the the uh, colorful shimmering of many different gems like you know rubies and 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 emeralds and and amber in all covered by a <laughs> by a like layer of of coal dust or or ash or and and I think it's really special. I think it's really different. And it is an example of, you know, how you can <laughs> really get from, you know, this to something completely different, applying your, invent, you know, your uh, inspiration, your imagination, your, by experimenting, by taking bits and bobs from, you know, what you see online, from what the knitting community shares on social medias or, or again, on Ravelry. So please be bold. That's my, <laughs> that's my invitation to you that I want to close off this section with. Please be bold, P please try different combinations and uh, do not stick with the rules. You know, somebody says blue and green should never be seen or all these things, oh, who cares? <laughs> Just try, give it a try and, uh, and you may end up with something you really enjoy, with something absolutely unexpected and... Uh, and that will definitely, you know, fill your cup with uh, your creative cup with, uh, with quite a bit of enthusiasm. Now, works in progress. I have tried to do something with regard to the light, but mm, haven't really succeeded much. You'll have to bear with me. It really is a bit of a... Of a strange day and I'm not the most you know technologically equipped podcaster on on the on the planet so that's it so with regard to uh, works in progress I'm afraid I'm not showing you anything <laughs> any progress on the whips I had in my previous episode for various reasons. One is uh, the sock, the color work sock I was knitting mm, is no more. I, I really wasn't feeling it and uh, I've repurposed, let's say, the yarn, uh, the, the hand-dyed uh, minis that I had had from my friend Lindsay uh, in a swap um, for a secret. <laughs> uh, project I'm doing a secret test knit that I can't show you so let's close this you know this topic <laughs> once and for all um, the uh, jumper the beautiful uh, blue jumper I was a uh, navy jumper I was knitting um, it's called Circe by Natasha Hornby, Hornby. Uh, hasn't seen much progress I've knitted the two stripes that go down the sleeves but and picked up the stitches on one side to start knitting the front but I, I was distracted by other things and of course I was distracted by a lot of new projects that you know I've been happily casting on regardless of what lies abandoned in, in the many project bags under my desk it's all right we can do that it's our knitting it's our space of freedom so who cares and i've got so new two works in progress two new works in progress to show you but i'm not sure you'll want to see one of them because it's my uh, surprise sock uh, for the knit along that mr stephen west has recently announced and started only three days ago last Thursday. So I'll start with that. If you are doing it and if you want to have no spoilers and see nothing of it before it, it you know, you come to, 
to completion of your first clue, please stop here and skip to here. I'll write the uh, timestamp for the next section after that will start after we've spoken about uh, Mr. West's um, sock along. So it is carried in these pretty, pretty project bags that I've uh, I've sewn for myself <laughs> just for the for the project because it recalls the colors that I'm using for my for my project, which are these rust, which is actually the yarn I used for my first lento, uh, a mistering fingering weight uh, yarn that I got at a bake wool, wool festival in the um, at Bakewell Bakewell <laughs> wool festival in in Derbyshire in the UK near where I used to live and uh, it's supposed to be a hundred percent wool it definitely is very warm and very soft and it is a color I really like and I'm I'm pairing it with the is Bendigo Woolen Mills um, sock yarn fine merino 80% merino wool 20% nylon in the shade uh, 203 which is basically a cream cream and this is the um, the page I've started for I'm reading these all of these in the page I've started on my journal I've added a little strand of the yarns as well, which is something that some of my friends have um, sort of suggested many times. Uh, Lean, I'm thinking of you. <laughs> but I thought I wouldn't do it before because I'm worried the, the book may become as thick as this after a while. It is on the way for being a big book, but I've got space and I've, I've decided to do it this time. I've done a bit of a, of a sketch of the, of the sock, the first clue of the sock, and uh, a note about the fact that I'm doing this uh, surprise sock along together with my friends uh, in the UK, where I am part of a virtual knitting group initially organized by Lucy of the Disney This Nanny Knits podcast, my dear friend Lucy, and by Karen of the Knitting and Labradors podcast. Hello, Karen. And uh, so we are doing it uh, all together. We had a nice uh, custom party on Thursday when the first uh, clue was released. And, uh, and I'm really happy with how it's going on. Actually, I should do a little introduction about my sort of love-hate relationship with Stephen West's knit alongs. Because I mean, I adore him as a as a designer. I totally do. You know, he's you know my level of crazy <laughs> sort of of designer. But um, and I I love his shawls. I, I really am a shawl person. I, I wear shawls in the house, outside. Sometimes I'd have a shawl on rather than a jacket. So I am a shawl person. But when I did. I did his first uh, knit along this past October, the twists and turns, and that didn't work for me. Didn't work. All that, you know, casting off, um, binding off and casting on to do the, um, the braids that he does on the first section of the show. If you are familiar with it, I'm sure you understand what I mean was terribly tiresome for me. Moreover, it wasn't probably the best time to do something like that because they were literally the days we were leaving the UK to move here. So there was an awful lot going on in my life and jet lag and this and that. And also I sort of thought, oh, it will be a tricky, complicated show. Let's keep it safe in terms of color choice and I went for a cream top and fern colors that are lovely but are probably a 
bit too quiet and safe for <laughs> a combination for me. So they were not inspiring me terribly either. And uh, so what I made of it is still cozily, you know, stored in a bag in my yarn cabinet and it will you know soon be unraveled i i always must make a note to myself just rip it off because it's beautiful yarn it was a mm, yarn by eden cottage yarns milbury silk so it was a four ply uh, blue faced lester and silk um, blend it's beautiful it needs to be used for something really special and um, you know find a, find a happy ending for <laughs> to its life so anyway mm, the sock i thought would be more you know a gentler start to the to the sock along or make along season and um, and i think it was a very wise decision to start it because it was ex great fun to do it with my friends and because i'm really enjoying knitting on it now my choice uh, has been the one of knitting one at a time there are people who do two at a time there are people who knit the first clue which is this bit i think i'm, I'm two or three rounds short of the of these first of completing this first two um these first um clue uh, so people who finish the first mm, calf and then will leave it on hold and uh, do the second calf and then when the next uh, clue comes out carry on on this one and on the other one in parallel my choice was you know i don't need to add deadlines to my <laughs> making and to my knitting at the minute so just making one enjoying it and i'll and and i'll do the second one eventually i i'm sure i'll do because i'll do it because i i've really enjoyed this one so far so it's a two by two ribbing you start with a with a german twisted cast on because it's very stretchy uh, i'm doing the first size because i've got quite skinny feet and i normally do 58 stitches for my socks so this is 60 stitches the first size I thought it'd be okay and it is i've tried it on snug perfect so you do quite a, a long uh, ribbing and then you do your cables which was super fun to do never be scared by new techniques and particularly with stephen west in his videos i know he really holds your hand through the various bits i haven't really watched it all i've just started watching it to see the announcement and then skipped to the end to see how you know this first clue would look once completed my curiosity wins over any sort of you know uh, <laughs> with over anything really so i've um, i've just followed the the instructions on the pattern and it's uh, it's super easy the only thing um, it tricked some of my friends in the knitting group so i want to mention it if you haven't started it on but you're meaning to when yet but you're meaning to when you do the the ribbing do not start with a knit two purl two but it's purl two knit two because these if you don't do these it, you'll end up with having a bit of a mess you know following the instruction for the for the cable a bit of a hard time following the instructions for the cabling at the top and then you start with this mosaic sort of slip stitching not even mosaic it's just slip stitching texture which is uh, is quite fun i'm not sure i'd have chosen to knit a socks with this pattern if i had seen it you know before the release but it's fun to knit and i think i will i will definitely you know wear it with pleasure uh, this is the inside for me so uh, the the little strands are only two stitches long 
Am I pulling too much on them? I don't know, probably a tiny bit, but I think it looks very all right and it fits my, my leg perfectly. So um, I'm quite really happy about it. It's tiny needles, I know. I know if you are new to cables or some other techniques and you're worried about doing them on, on tiny needles, do not be because it's, um, you just need to pay attention, but it's, uh, it's really good fun. And I'm also very pleased with the, with the color combination I've used here. It does recall a bit like sort of the 70s, doesn't it? And I think also the, this pattern is quite, quite appropriate for, <laughs> for the, or maybe it's just what's carrying about, is, is giving me this inspiration about the 70s. But nice. It's really nice. I, I look forward to, to, to the next clue, which will be on Thursday. So the, the knit along um, lasts four weeks, and which is the same as it is for the show, but you know, there's quite a massive difference in knitting even two, even if you wanted to do two at a time socks and a, a massive show like Stephen West's. Never mind, I still want to, to, you know, try again this year with the knit along and, uh, and in the meantime I, I have fun with this sock and I'm really pleased with how things are going and I'm really pleased with my little project bag as well, really love, love the, the colour combination. Great! So, hello! Hello, welcome back to the friends who skipped this section <laughs> because they, they didn't want to have any spoilers about my Stephen West sock along. We are now able to, to go back, to, to carry on together on another work in progress, which is a very recent uh, cast on and it is a test knit for my dear friend Anna at the Bluebird Box. Anna Daku, she's a, a desi knitwear designer based in Canada. Well, she looks after bluebirds <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the area where she lives. That's where her uh, name, her sort of designer, uh, brand designing brand comes from she's got a podcast here on youtube that i think i have mentioned before and i love watching her because this one i've said this thing i've said before as well it's great to have an insight on the designing process i think of the designers to see how uh, a new project you know comes to to its completion how uh, the designer addresses the problems she encounters during the, the, the design of a, of a project. So I, I really, really love listening to designers and, and Anna particularly, she's such a soulful, sweet and talented person. I, I really enjoy, you know, knitting in her company. And uh, she has recently released a lovely, lovely tea called the Pure Tea. I'll add a photograph here. And recently announced her, you know, the, 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 the beginning of her test knit campaign. And I, you know, I had applied before applying because I, I texted her and said, Anna, please, please let me test this T-shirt. And she said, yeah, yeah, of course, I have tested for her before. A, a like tank top, very, very pretty tank top with some lace. This one is a, is a different um, style, as you can see. It's a boxy t-shirt um, with a very different shoulder construction and uh, um, it's, it's quite loose. It's, it is to be worn with about 30 centimeters ease on your body and it's meant to be cropped, though, you know, in terms of length, I suppose everybody can personalize it a little bit. So this is as far as I've gone. 
basically you start at the back of the neck this is the back of the neck and then since the beginning you uh, that was a bird <laughs> flying over <laughs> my my glass roof and you uh, start splitting since the very first stitches here for the shoulders uh, where you have this panel that creates like a four seam and then the uh, quite you know intense uh, increases on the two sides of this panel uh, bring the the fabric of this t-shirt around your shoulders basically until you do some some increases at the front and um, yes i am supposed very soon to join these two bits and start knitting in the round lovely i love knitting on it and i am using a yarn that will give me some trouble i already know it <laughs> i already know for sure the yarn is true boo true boo true bow <laughs> by lion brand and it is a hundred percent rayon from bamboo yarn the colorway is sea foam number one zero eight L and it is a fingering weight yarn theoretic no, a sorry a DK yarn so it's 220 meters for a hundred grams it gives me the um, gauge that the um, that Anna is uh, is asking for which is 20 stitches but that happens after blocking because what what this yarn does i mean i i enjoy it so much because it is extremely drapey once it's blocked look at my swatch so it's gonna be fantastic in terms of you know how it looks when you are wearing and i think it will be extremely um, fresh and you know comfortable to wear in summer so i can't wear wait to to wear this one but um, basically it is 26 stitches per 10 centimeter pre-blocking and 21 post blocking so that's a massive increase in um, for me at least on 3.5 millimeter needles it's a massive increase in uh, you know in in the gauge and so i'm knitting a bit dangerously on this one <laughs> that is i need to trust my gauge swatch and uh, i'm sure that if everything goes as you know the gauge swatch promises it'll be perfect and extremely extremely drapey and soft and it's got also a little bit of a sheen to it i i think you can see it can't you i was immediately drawn to this color when i bought the i actually bought this yarn for another project but then it was absolutely not the right thing so i'm very happy to have a chance to use it so I was very drawn to this color and then I got home and said oh, you already have a t-shirt in this color which is my Anka's, Anka's tea you have seen it in some previous episodes and yes I do it's a different yarn but it's the same color I think this is a, a proof of the fact that I really like this color let's not you know bother too much about this moreover the other tea though it's a short sleeves one like like this one is um wool and cotton so is not quite suitable for the warmer days while well, i think this this yarn will be absolutely fantastic also you know in 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 the hottest <laughs> australian summer days so yeah i started only two days ago but I'm, I'm knitting on so happily. It's my, you know, knitting on this one is really my happy place. It's very relaxing, very in, enjoyable. And it's uh, this different and new to me shoulder construction is, is keeping me engaged. 
and the the test is run on a on slack as uh, anna usually does uh, with a very nice group of other ladies and knitters from all over the world so i've made new friends there and yeah yeah all the test knitting joy there for me i've got a, a an entry in my journal of course there we are Da -da! so uh, this is the the yarn um, band the bow band and i've made a note to myself watch your gauge <laughs> this is just the test knit size three i'm doing size three 120 centimeters uh, circumference uh, on the finished garment uh, with 30 centimeters positive ease and I've cast on on the 8th of July. I was now briefly thinking what day was that? Six Saturday. Fine, fine. Sometimes I it comes back to my mind what my grandmother used to say. She was a, a fantastic maker a fantastic seamstress most of all as a young girl she used to embroider uh, silken underwear for the very rich ladies in her in, with her sister so she had you know really magic hands and she'd always tell us all uh, you never start a project start uh, set off on a trip or get married on Tuesday or Fridays. I, I do not believe in these things, but when I have to start something, I, she comes back in, in my mind and I, and I think of that. I, I loved her so much. Okay, so this is my pure tea, pure tea. And I've even added a little sticker of a bird there. <laughs> This is supposed to be one of Anna's bluebirds. Well, my interpretation of it. <laughs> good, 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 good. Oh no, I'm trapped. Okay, just to keep you up to scratch with the, with the weather, it's now raining <laughs> quite nicely on me. And as this roof is a bit old, there are occasional leaks. I hope it doesn't leak on my camera right now. Anyway, we are, we are here in any weather, in any circumstance, just having fun with our knitting. Uh, so in my previous episode, I did announce that I was starting a, um, a shop on Etsy. Uh, to sell my own made project bags because I've recently found out that together with, you know, playing with yarn and patterns and colors, the next thing that makes me so happy is playing with fabrics and patterned fabrics and colors and, and making pretty and exciting and fun project bags um, to, you know, share my, my joy uh, for color and, and knitting with all all the people who are like-minded with me. So I've started my shop about um, three weeks ago and I'm, I'm really happy about how things are going. I'm ever so thankful to all the friends that from here or from other, you know, <laughs> circles have supported me by purchasing the bags. And I'm particularly proud and happy to say that the initiative I launched the shop with, which was uh, the sale of two charity bags, um, has gone beautifully and I've sold those very quickly and the money um, I, I raised with them have now been donated. I'll add a little um, like snippet of the receipt to the council council. Um, who is an organ that is an organization that supports cancer patients and their families here in Australia. And I, I do feel very strongly for these sort of, you know, organizations as I had to go through um, this experience myself. And so I, 
I really wanted to support it and celebrate at the same time this new endeavor of mine. Um, that's great. So thank you ever so much. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Uh, of course, as the bugs started to take, some of the bugs started to take their way, <laughs> you know, uh, to, to you, to your craft rooms, I have made more and there is a small selection available as we speak. You see the, the link in the description box below. Anyway, it's on Etsy. It's a knitter suitcase mm, shop again. <laughs> that's, that's my brand at the minute. And I've got a few examples here. There are some smaller ones like these that are basically um, sock bags. They are okay for socks, for, uh, for small projects like beanies, like one or even two skeins, but, um, shawls. They fit really well in, in my bags. These are all padded. They are all uh, drawstrings because that's my favorite sort of um, style. And they all have some fun uh, lining inside because, you know, I can't, I can't do without some, some fun fabrics also in the inside. There are some bigger ones like these that are absolutely fine for um, like um, three, probably up to three. Uh, or skeins or 600, uh, six balls of yarn, 300 uh, grams, um, yeah, 300 grams balls. And they also have a handle, different styles handles on them. So it's, it will be easier for you to carry them around. And then something that has made, really, mm, has made me really excited I have uh, started developing a new style, which is the style for a bigger bag, like this one, where my, this jumper has been, uh, has been stored while it was knitted. In this case, it is a handle. It is a bigger tote, you know, it still has a um, box bottom. It still has got the drawstring because I find it's a very good option and it also basically gives you uh, more space. You can really fill in the bag up to the top and just pull the drawstring and you'll be able to hold a lot of, <laughs> of yarns and projects in it. This style of bag has got, oh, where are they? Has got pockets inside. Now I'm still experimenting. So this one is not padded. It's just got some interfacing to keep the, the to make the, the fabric a little bit sturdier. But there are others mm, that have on the contrary been padded. So this one is still in the making. You can see the pins there. So mm, this one uh, definitely would fit a purple lover person. So has got again oh, not easy to show but i'll add some pictures at the end has got uh, some big mm, pockets in the mid inside and this one i love particularly has even got a different style yet which is side pockets in this velvety velvety fabric and um, another big pocket to big pockets inside there and the drawstring. So yeah, I've been playing with these a lot and I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to add some of them in the shop very soon. I have also happened to make one of them um, for a lady who had some specific requirements. Here is the bag. So you see she preferred some, you know, sort of rust and, and some design, some colors that are um, a little bit less bright and in the face as my usual ones. And I really enjoyed that too. So um, my, my message to you today is, if you like the style of my bags, if you, but if you don't like the color, or if you have seen one in the shop and then you haven't seen it anymore because it's been bought by somebody, just reach out to me. This is my email address again, and uh, and we can talk about you know 
how you would like your bag to, to be and if you have color preferences or if there's a specific theme that you'd like your bag to be uh, to, to feature. I'm now thinking, and here I, I will appreciate your, your opinions, would anybody like some Halloween themed bags? Because we are not that far away from Halloween now. We need to think ahead of these things. And, you know, I've seen some amazing fabrics that oh, I'd love to, to try and make, but I'm not quite sure whether, you know, it's something that people, particularly here in Australia, where all my customers are at the minute, would, would enjoy. Having said that, another thing that's been added to the shop is international shipping. So um, you, if you look, if you're interested in a bag and you select it, you'll see what the um, shipping would be for your country. And uh, anyway, again, if you have any doubts about the shipping or if you're interested in more than one bag and want to make sure what you know, the overall um, shipping price would be, just drop me an email, drop me a message on Instagram, uh, comment down below here. I'm sure there's a way uh, we, can, we can get in touch. And thanks again. Thanks so, so, so much for your support. Final part I want to talk about is um, a few things I'm really excited for. One of them is a present I have received from my very good friend Lynn again. Hi. Well, she sent me these absolutely special cake of yarn that some of you may be familiar with, which is coming all the way from Germany. This is a yarn by Wool & Twine Fiber Studio. I had even looked up the name for it and now I have forgotten, but I'll write down here, down here on the screen. It is a 100 gram um, plate of um, 100% wool and spun yarn. Look at it. It is so light and airy and now I can't I can't have you smell it, but if you could smell it, it's the most sheepy smell in but in such a good way. It makes me feel of baby lamps. <laughs> And you know of a of fields and meadows of you know wooden cabins and of of a simple life and it it reminds me a lot of you know also of the UK where we were used we used to live in the countryside and so we had sheep all around us so. Mm, I just want to to, <laughs> to dig my, my nose in this yarn and and I am ever so grateful. It is a, a, a very nice neutral color. And I must tell you, I, I like this one too. Now you all think, oh, but you like bright colors. It's true. But you know, there's a time and a moment for everything in, in our life, I think. Sometimes I just crave something simple that doesn't overstimulate my, my brain. And the, the, the great thing about this yarn is that it's truly natural. It's, uh, it's, mm, it's minimally treated, minimally uh, manipulated by, by man. And... I can't wait to experience what it really means to, to knit with something like this, as it's my first time. I have a project in mind already, and this project is uh, The Javelin Show by uh, Tedis Lutzak. 
I've liked it for a long, long time and well, since it's been released. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm not even sure whether it's the, this is the right metrage or, or how, you know, um, it will be enough. But I know it's plenty of yarn, even if it's only 100 grams, because it's extremely light and, um, and this will be cast on very soon. Thanks so, so much. This truly is a very precious present for me. So this is a very exciting thing. The next exciting thing happening is a um, make-along that will, a knit-along that will start very soon. And it, ha it is happening as a collaboration between some fantastic people that I'm, I'm very lucky to know. So uh, the knit along has been announced by uh, Gayan and uh, Nicole of the Perfect Pairings podcast, my knitty friends uh, over in Melbourne. And um, it is a knit along for any jumper, um, any sweater uh, designed by Susanna Kartinen of the uh, Sana & Co uh, designing brand that I have tested for her recently, if you've seen my previous episode. Um, so that's enough, <laughs> you know, to sell the, the initiative to me as something I can't miss because I, I'm really, really fond of these three people. But the truth is the jumpers that uh, qualify for this knit along, all designed by Susanna, are absolutely beautiful. Uh, straight up my alley, honestly. So I have decided to join. It, it will start later in August, if I'm not wrong, until November. So there's plenty of time to, to think about it. And... Uh, um, my choice is the EXP sweater. Here is the, the photograph, which is, I love everything about it. The mm, half fisherman rib, which I enjoy so much knitting. Uh, the fit, you know, the sort of cropped boxy fit and the construction, which is a little bit different to, you know, to many other jumpers and the opportunity to play with color because basically you choose a main color um, and then a, another color that can be in use, can be a, a fade rather than a single color. Um, and so the jumper will have, uh, you know, contrasting like brioche, columns over a different background color. And it's also got this particular feature that's reversible. So you can wear it inside out and the two colors will play in, a, in, an, in an opposite way. So, I mean, it's so exciting. <laughs> so I'll definitely do that. And, uh, but there are also other jumpers, very, very interesting, very, very beautiful, gorgeous um, jumpers that you can knit. And uh, you also have the chance of um, choosing among a few sets that um, the dyer uh, Louis and Lola has, um, that is, goes by the brand Louis and Lola, has created just on purpose of these, uh, with the specific purpose of these knit along. So there's so much about it. There is uh, also a Facebook group, which is um, just dedicated to the people joining the knit along, where you can have support from the designer, where you can, you know, sort of um, socialize and, uh, and share your experience with other, with other knitters. Wow, <laughs> can't wait to start that. And yes, what yarn will I use? We don't know yet, but we will know very soon because 
I'm about to leave. I'm about to leave on Thursday to go to Bendigo. And uh, well, I'll fly to Melbourne and I'll meet with Guyane. And uh, the following day on Friday, uh, myself and Guyane and Nicole, the duo from behind Perfect Pairings, will we'll go together to Bendigo. And I am, oh, <laughs> I am overexcited about this one because of the company, first of all, because of the event, which is. Well, if you're not from Australia, probably you're not familiar with it, but it's a massive event all centered around, you know, sheep and wool. So um, there's livestock. There are, I understand, like mm, competitions or contests for the prettiest sheep, fashion shows. And there's a massive market where uh, I'm told the best Australian uh, dyers and wool producers and mills and you know bag makers and everything we like everything we like <laughs> is there for us to 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 see and, uh, and I'm quite I was quite you know giggling last night explaining to my husband that I think it's quite a common joke to call it Spendigo rather than Bendigo because of the amount of money that a neat, uh, you know, a country strain herself from spread, from spending. So yeah, it might be a little bit of a of a of an expensive trip for me, but I'm I'm beyond excited and I'm particularly excited about uh, you know meeting in person these two friends that I have connected so much through through the podcast and through internet and to meet Susanna, Susanna of Sana and Co, who will be there as well in person and of, you know, buying some nice woolly goodness. <laughs> I have a few projects in mind that may, you know, may need yarn and I may end up need, uh, shopping for, but I know myself when I get to these massive events, basically my brain is instantly scrambled. I go in with some ideas with a virtual shopping list and then I just buy what catches my eye and... Uh, but I'll try and be good and not do as I've done in the past. You know, in the past I've managed to go to some wool fairs and come out with lots of things that excited me the most, but none of them could be put together between them or with something I had in stash to really <laughs> make a whole project. So I want to try and avoid this sort of, you know, silly, rational shopping. <laughs> <laughs> shopping, you know, outcome. Um, another great thing about this trip is that another friend um, that I've met through the podcast uh, reached out to me and asked me whether we could meet and, and have a uh, have a meet and chat session so I'll meet her as well on Saturday and yeah there are a lot of, of very nice and, and fabulous things that I'm expecting from this from this trip to to Melbourne. If you are an Australian knitter if you are visiting um, the the show that the show at Bendigo this weekend and you see me please stop me say hello Say, show me what you have bought and, and I'll do the same and it will be a fantastic opportunity to meet some of you in person. So I think this is long enough now. I've got my children in, in the house to go and look after. It's, uh, it's school holidays here. So they're off school and they're having the laziest morning uh, as I, I can't be there to push them around. So... Um, you take care, my, my dear friends. Thanks for sharing this, this hour with me. And uh, happy knitting. Bye.